Hey, what's up guys? This is just going to be a quick video going over a classic episode of Batman the Animated Series. Right now I'm working on a video over Batman vs. Dracula, but while finding that DVD I came across a bunch of other Batman DVDs from my childhood and one of them was Volume 1 of Batman the Animated Series. When I was a kid, I'd put these DVDs on to fall asleep to at night. Now, that doesn't mean I wouldn't also watch them on DVD players during car rides or when I would stay home sick, but to say these cartoons and many of the other DVDs I had were an integral part of my childhood would be an understatement. When we had to tell everyone what we wanted to be when we grew up, I deadass would say Indiana Jones, then it was Rockstar, and then my dreams died and I became a content creator. This episode of Batman the Animated Series series is perhaps the most quintessential Batman anything. It has it all from the world's greatest detective actually doing detective work and going undercover to the psychological damage Bruce has from his parents' death and the time being Batman, and the kind heart Bruce has being on full display the whole way through. It even has a big explosion at the end and Alfred gets a whole B-plot to himself. The kicker is that Batman doesn't really show up until the last five minutes. As a kid, I would hate this episode for that fact, but later I would grow to appreciate the creative storytelling and the striking visuals of the dream sequences. Even going back to make this video, I found new things to love about it, like the real shit they just drop into a kid's show. I've talked about this episode long enough, let's actually get into it. The opening credits set the tone right away with someone ripping a fat ass harmonica solo. We open up with Gotham in the sky as we fly down with the birds to the streets into a soup kitchen. This is when we hear about homeless people and volunteers going missing. I can't prove it, but I'm positive people are disappearing. Transients, regulars, old faces I miss seeing. After hearing this, Bruce decides to investigate it, but not as the bat. This is when we see Bruce transform into a homeless. Using a change of wardrobe and some makeup, Bruce is ready to hit the streets and start investigating. This episode is one of those rare gems where the world's greatest detective actually does some detective work. The search leads him to the docks, and this is when he runs into some unsavory characters offering some jobs in an alleyway at night. Hey buddy. You looking for a job? Maybe. What kind of job? Bruce doesn't pay for pussy and is insulted at these would-be gigolos and proceeds to kick their ass. This is until a cat distracts him and he gets the literal stick pulled on him. This transitions to the prison labor camp mining operation thing. We see Bruce waking up chained to the bed with no memory. We're also introduced to Salvo and Riley who are going to be the ones helping Bruce get acquainted with his new living situation. Where am I? Well, opinions differ, but we all agree. It ain't Miami. We see just how bad it is with guard towers filled with armed guards and razor wires topping the fences. This is when we're introduced to the boss of the operation and we see just how based and red-pilled he is. They have to eat, sir. I have to eat. They have to work. Dude literally cooks a random guy just to get some pep in their step. Or you'll all end up like him. <gasps> After we see this vulgar display of power, we cut to Alfred who's noticing that Bruce hasn't returned, which kicks off the B-plot for this episode, which while is the comic relief half of the story, it links up to the A-plot in an organic way, and there are some decent jokes in there. We cut back to Bruce in the mines, loading rocks and making talks. So what brought you guys here? I was one of Gotham City's unemployed. Now I got a job. Lucky me. After Riley brings up the soup kitchen, Bruce starts to get his memory back, but this is cut short when a cave-in derails his train of thought. This leads to the next Alfred segment, where after getting tired of answering Bruce's calls for him, he decides to look around. After figuring out which car is missing, Alfred activates the tracker, which shows it being at the docks. We then get one of the most beautiful and haunting pieces of animation I've seen in a while, where we see Bruce's nightmare. We see Bruce passing a hall of mirrors trying to find himself. This is interrupted when one of his reflections starts laughing and it turns into the Joker who proceeds to reach out of the mirror and drag Bruce into a fireball. <laughs> the decency to be delicate. 
This transitions to Bruce in the streets who gets bombarded by homeless people begging for help and Bruce crying because he can't help them all. Bruce wakes up in a cold sweat starting to remember a little bit more of his past. We then cut to the yard where the boss man is eating a fat ass hoagie. Side note, this dude's food always looks gas and I don't know if they did it on purpose to show how much better he has it or if these people were just really good at animating food. After Salvo role plays a whoopee cushion, the boss man orders him to be thrown in the box. This is when a fight breaks out with Riley and Bruce kicking many asses before being bombarded by guards. This leads into Alfred at the docks finding Bruce's car at a scrapyard. After getting the tracking device back, Alfred notices some shady characters and puts a tracker on their van. They're either going to lead him to Bruce or a furniture outlet store. Either way, it's a win-win. We cut back to Bruce and Riley who are cooking in the box. This is when the show drops some real shit out of nowhere and we hear Riley breaking down while seeing Bruce's uncomfortable face. Remember what you told me? You can't lose hope. I can't take it anymore! I lost my family! My family! When Riley brings up his family, we get another dream sequence flashback thing where Bruce remembers who he is. After telling Riley that they're gonna get out of there, Bruce donkey kicks the cage and makes a run for it. He's being pursued by a team of men and dogs, and after running into a dead end, Bruce parkours his way up the cliffside, American Ninja Warrior style. Oh! What? Oh! Oh! oh, 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 oh. This guy is a hard competitor. <laughs> we cut back to Alfred who's flying the bat wing and arguing with the autopilot. Land you buckers of bolts. Your funeral. Oh dear. After almost running Bruce over, Alfred and Bruce are finally reunited. This is when Batman finally comes out after 17 minutes and 45 seconds. He crashes the boss man's dinner and then is chased into the mines. It's kind of weird seeing actual guns shooting actual bullets and not lasers or phasers or some other shit. The group follow Batman into the caves and this is where we get to see some classic Batman taking out a group of people antics. The game is changed when boss man flips the switch and puts everyone in the dark. What he fails to realize is that he's fucking with someone who was adopted by the darkness. We see a silhouetted Batman continue to pick off the team as the harmonica dude comes back to rip another solo. Batman follows the boss man to the TNT storage and after the boss man drops his lantern they have to make a quick escape down the water slides from the worst COD Zombies map. <laughs> This is when we get the cherry on top of the episode and the mountain explodes and the boss man goes to prison. We then get the aftertaste of the episode with Bruce and the gang at the soup kitchen. This is when Riley and Salvo learn who Bruce really is and Bruce offers them a job at Wayne Tech Enterprises as he rides off into the sunset. Hit me, Riley. Hit you? Why? Maybe I'll lose my memory and wake up a millionaire too. This show is an absolute banger, and there's nothing I could say that would add to that conversation. That being said, I wanted to highlight this episode because it's one of the best episodes of the show and even one of the best Batman stories, period. I never realized any of this when I was a kid because I just wanted to see Batman kicking ass, but after getting an appreciation for film and TV, I can go back and appreciate the unique storytelling and the more off-the-wall moments like the dream sequence. If you haven't seen this show, I'm not sure what you're doing here, but if you have seen it, you should go and rewatch some of the episodes. Your taste change with time and after so much time has passed you might just appreciate the grilled cheese sandwich a little more after eating so much salad you don't win friends with salad solo oh baby <laughs> that's rocking